Alright guys, today I'll be telling the story of John and Twistle, the English musician and the songwriter who was the bassist for the Who. So let's get started. So John, Alec and Twistle was born on October 9, 1944 in Cheswick, London in England. So as you may know, on October 9, two Johns were born on that day. However, Lennon was born in 1940 and John was born in 1944. So there's actually an age difference between Lennon and Entwistle. But anyways, let's just continue. So what I would apparently say is John was actually an only child. Because of this, his father Hubert played the trumpet and his mother Maud played the piano. But his parents' marriage failed soon after he was born. He was raised by his mother at his grandparents' house in South Acton in, in West London. The divorce was uncommon in the 1940s. It was contributed to Entwistle becoming reserved and socializing a little. So actually Entwistle was, um, was anti-social because he didn't um, talk to like, friends like that. He just um, did something which he was the quiet one. So that's why his nickname was the quiet one because he didn't have like many friends. When he was seven years old, he began to express himself with music. He began taking piano lessons, but he did not enjoy this experience. And after joining the affluent grammar school at just 11 years old, he just switched to the trumpet. And when he, when he was moving to the French horn, he joined the Middlesex School's Symphony Orchestra. He then met Pete Townsend in the second year of school and formed a jazz tree, tree, tried jazz band, the Conformate. The, the only group played one gig together and decided that rock and roll was more of an attractive prospect. And Twistle in particular was having difficulty hearing his trumpet with the rock band and decided to switch to playing guitar. But due to his large fingers, his fondness for the lowest of Dwayne Eddy, he decided to take the bass guitar instead. He made his own instrument at home, and that's when Roger Daltrey, who had been in who had been with in Twistle, was in the outer country. But since he left his sheet metal, Daltrey was aware of N Twist at school and asked him to join for this band, the Detours. So how did John and Twistle join the Who? After joining the Detours, N Twistle played a major role in countering Pete Townsend's budding talent on the guitar. And he insisted that Townsend was admitted to the band as well. But Roger Daltrey fired all the members of the band, including Some of them, but with the exception of Entwistle, Townsend, and Doug Sandem, who was a semi pro player, who was several years older than the other. Daltrey re extinguished the role of the guitarist to Townsend in 1963, becoming frontman and lead singer. But when the band decided that the blonde Daltrey needed to stand up there for more than the others, Entwistle dyed his naturally light brown hair black, so it remained until the early 1980s. So after that, in 1967, Entwistle married his childhood sweetheart, Alison White, and he bought a semi-detached home in Stanmore in London. But he moved out of the city in 1978 in Gloucestershire, and his 17-mansion Corewood resembled a muse museum, which was the largest guitar belonging to any rock musician. So N. Twistle picked up two names. He was nicknamed the Ox because of his strong conclusion. He, it means it was something to eat or something to drink. He was the rest of them. And he was also nicknamed Thunderfingers, which Bill Wyman was the guitarist for the Rolling Stones. So update guys, Bill Wyman actually retired from the Rolling Stones, but he is still alive. So he's been there since uh, 1997 and he's recorded and toured with his own band with the Bill Wyman uh, Rhythm Kings so apparently 
and Twistle and Townsend had begun to experience this feedback, which were amplifiers in the mid-1960s. But Hendrix did not enjoy destroying his instrument until he had witnessed the Who's also destructive art. Sometimes N. Twistle's Iwari and sometimes Lack of Humor clashed with Townsend's more introspective and interesting work. He wrote many songs on every Who album except for Quantum Portophenia. He was frustrated at Townsend because it was not allowing the singer. He says, I got a couple of songs on my album, but the problem is I wanted to sing the songs and, and not Roger let them sing. He was part of the lesson, so he became the first member to release a solo album, Smash Your Head Against the Wall, in 1971, which featured Keith Moon, Jerry Shiley, Vivian Stanhall, Neil Ives, and the Rhodes, and the Who's only Dave Corretto Langston. He was the only member of the band to have the formal music training. In addition to the bass guitar, he contributed in backing vocals. And such as the French horn, pictures of Lily, the piano, the trumpet, the bugle, and the Jews harp. So, he has wrote a such song as 515, which was a song which was sang by Pete Townsend, and it was part of the Who's second rock band opera, Quadronopia, in 1973. So while Antiso was known for being the quietest, mem quietest member of the Who, he was in fact the rest of the band. And Twistle was the first member to wear a Union Jack waistcoat. This piece of clothing later became Townsend's signature garment. So what he really did was he was songwriting. When Townsend was, in, was merged for the Who Songwriter-in-Chief, and Twistle began to have some distinguished contributions with, with Whiskey Man, Boris the Spider, and the quick one, a contributing of Dr. Doctor, Someone's Coming in 1967, Silas Stingy, Heinz Baked Beans, and Mania. The Who will sell out Dr. Jericho and Dr. Hyde, which was also based on a story. So actually, Dr. Jericho and Dr. Hyde, it was actually written by the bassist, John N. Twistle. And that song was about Keith Moon's drinking problems. So it actually started in 1968 when Keith Moon apparently uh, drank. He just drank too much alcohol, you know. And actually, fun fact, it is also known that Dr. High and Dr. Dr. Hero and Dr. High was actually a gothic novelist book by Robert Louis Stevenson which was published in 1886. So actually, it, it's actually the same name by uh, by the song for The Who. So apparently it's like, um, both of the songs have like the same name, but um, not all of them. So what other work that he did? So N. Twistle became the first member to release a solo album, Smash Your Head Against the Wall. But it was actually a black humor. The other times, which was Whistle is Whistle Rhymes, Rigor Majestad, Mad Dog, Too Late to Be the Hero, and The Rock. And when the Who did, Who by the Numbers was released in spring of 1975, they did not do any touring for most of the year. And Twistle had spent the summer performing solo projects. And apparently the US tours were in the 1990s. So Ringo Starr and his actual band and, and Twistle actually has like exhibition of paintings which features the Who, who actually has beside Erin Ellen Walk, which was an instrumental video for the Hot Licks video. So actually in the later years, and Twistle had a short-lived uh, supergroup which included uh, Keith Emerson, Joe Walsh, Jeff Baxter, and Simon Phillips. So. Towards the end of the career, he formed the John and Twistle project with his longtime friend, Steve Lugaro, and his guitarist, Mark Hitt. So apparently, he in, 19, in 2001, before N. Twistle died, he played in Alan Parsons' Beatles to have like a show walk down in Abbey Road. But in the late 2002, an expanded DV to CD was left for the art, and Live Dexy was released including the John and Twistle's band performance. 
So as you may be wondering about John Entwistle's um, death, so eventually he's the second member of the Who band to die. First being Keith Moon in 1978, where he died of a drug overdose at just 32 years old. So on June 27, 2002, Entwistle was found dead in room 658 at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in, pra in Paradise, Nevada. So apparently he was 57 years old. So Entwistle was actually gone for the night with Alison Rose, who was a local stripper and a groupie. However, at 3 a.m. they began to do like something, which is like secure things. And then uh, Entwistle and the groupie were sleeping. But by the time Rouse found Entwistle, he was cold and unresponsive. And unfortunately, the Clark County was the medical examiner that determined that his health was included to a drug cocaine overdose heart attack. He had a severe heart disease and literally smoked 20 cigarettes a day. So Ed Twistle actually had gone for medical examination before the 2002's WHO band actually started. It has been revealed that he had high blood pressure and high cholesterol levels, but and Twistle authorized Paul Reed to do like a physical examination that three of his arteries were blocked and had surgery. So by the time his funeral was an, was announced on in St. Edward's Church in Gloucestershire, England on July 10, 2002, his body was cremated and his ashes were buried privately across the ground by his mansion in Courtwood. So, and Twistle actually has a huge collection of guitars at Sober Bryce in London by his son Christopher. So, apparently, John and Twistle uh, was the basis of the Who, who was the second person to die. First being Keith Moon, which I actually mentioned earlier about what happened to Keith Moon in my uh, video of um, Who Are the Who Band. I actually do have a separate video about telling the story of Keith John Moon. If you want to watch it, it's fine. I will actually put a link to the description. Whoever wants to like hear me say the story of Keith Moon. I know it sounds bad guys, but trust me, it's going to get really, really messy when you read something like that. Because I just like made that video on October uh, 26th, uh, five days before Halloween. So apparently, um, the Keith Moon story will be in Who Are The Who Band. It's not going to be separate because, you know, it's going to take a lot of time. But for my Keith John Moon story, I will link to the description below. And you can just see, like, what happened to Keith back in 1978, where he actually died of a drug overdose. But anyways, guys, that's all I really need to say for now about the story of John and Twistle, the bassist of the Who. I'm really sorry that video was like really, really, really um, late, but I promise the next time I will make more videos in the future about um, every kind of singers that um, me or my dad likes uh, during the past days when, when my dad was like a very young kid. He uh normally listen to the who band i know he's actually heard about john and twistle but i'm not really that sure if my dad has heard about john and twistle but keith moon yes which keith moon was actually in my separate video about who was the who band so apparently guys that's all i really really need to say for now and i'm really sorry for this video because i was supposed to do this one on john and twistle's birthday he would have been 77 uh, this year if he was alive along with Keith Moon. But eventually the two of them uh, passed away from like drug substances. It was really, really sad to lose like two members of the Who band. But I know Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend are trying their best to sing as a duo. But anyways, guys, that's all I really need to say for now about the story of John and Twisto. So apparently, hey, guys, if there's like anything um, I really need to say, or is there anything you want to ask me, you can go ahead if you want, because 
you know um some videos will like take so long it will just take like um around uh more than 20 minutes or like hour or so i'm sorry for this one because you know it's like going to take forever when you just talk too much and anyways guys this is me huilin the tomboy gamer signing off